All right. Um, thanks for you guys come for OCP again. Uh, last last year, I think when I was here, I'm the only guy talking about CXO switch, and this time we have uh, additional two. Uh, that's very good uh, to see the industry is really shaping up and. Uh, um, the good news for XCon is that um, we are we are the currently we are the only vendor we are leading the industry wave. So um, today, uh, basically, um, I will talk about uh, our uh, solution and the roadmap as well. Um, so um, the current state for for the CXO switch from XCon is that we start sampling our chip um, about uh, in the in the early March this year. And our production version is going to be come to the um, market uh, in the middle of the next year. <clears throat> um, let's dive into it. So. So one of the main thing for the CXL 2.0 and the 3.x the switch is obviously is is, is enable the composable um, computing, and also of, of course for the AI computing. So in terms of the wave, um, from our understanding, by working with our, we have about the 20, more than 20 customers being, um, in the ecosystem. Uh, uh, we've been building this uh, in the in past two years. So our understanding about this market is that, um, f um, so this picture shows like three faces, and and uh, my 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 former colleague, the the Broadcom folks, and Microchip, they are leading the the first wave, uh, which is f using the PCIe to enable all the memory pooling and memory. Uh, not memory, um, mainly is for like SSD, um, the NIC and the GPU, these type of um, uh, polling and uh, uh, resource sharing. And today we are in a wave, basically is industry is, is a transition to using the CXL, especially for the CXL memory transaction to enable this uh, memory polling and uh, sharing. Um, so uh, the leader um, is XCOM. We are enabled to working with the, the CSP providers, the hyperscalers, and also those uh, system vendors, which um, um, developing using the, the AMD or Intel's um, the processor. Uh, our chip can deal with both CXO 1.1 and 2.0 as well. So this solution is is uh, is has already started uh, about almost a year ago. So we saw a lot of trend. This company is uh, moving in that direction. So any of you guys, you know, is uh, um, in this in this market, uh, please, uh, you know, you have to really um, jump into this wagon. So this wave is going to be enabled the composable memory computing. And the next wave is going to be, um, as as my colleague, uh, the, you know, the the the, um, the in industry colleague Broadcom and the microchips mentioned that is going to be CXL will enable the the AI computings um, for the memory pooling go through the GFAM and um, because of um, the 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 main thing is that. Uh, the LLM, the ChatGPT, all these AI applications, they, they are very memory thirsty. Um, so in order to build these kind of very large uh, uh, AI servers, uh, uh, definitely the, the only way to go is to have this um, composable memory um, structure. <clears throat> so, um, I think this graph is is a pretty straightforward. So the composable that's the, that's the only way to go. And uh, today's standalone with the uh, the servers is number one is waiting 
wasting the memory resource and also is going to be consume a lot of the, the power and the, um, so and they're just going to be under the way um, is going to be replaced by this uh, composable memory system which is uh, the nickname called the JetBomb that basically means just a bunch of memory. This is a memory compliance, um, memory appliance. Um, so, so the different hosts can be massively connected through the CXO switch and the CXO switch can be cascading to a much larger um, um, the fabric. Uh, so that is a way to enable all these hosts have an opportunity to to get a very large amount of um, memories as needed. So 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 any of this memory allocation is going to be like based on a needed uh, base. And after the uh, application completed, then uh, the memory can be released back. So this is called the uh, composability and disaggregation. So to achieve this goal, and today the industry obviously is in the CXO because the process only support the CXO 1.1 and the 2.0 is around the corner. So um, the XCon, our switch, we are able to enable even for CXO 1.1, we can enable the memory pooling and the, for the composability. And um, um, so we are the first one have this uh, a very large capacity, um, like more than what the other our competitor has in terms of the land count, and um, for both 1.1 and the 2.0, um, one of the very good advantage for the large capacity is that a lot of our customers is using is it uh, take advantage of the large capacity of our, our chip to build a very large me memory pool, because for for the first wave, the composability to have a very large memory is very essential. So that's why uh, our chip uh, offers a very high capacity to enable this. So the next wave, uh, the, in about two years, because CXO 3.1 is still undergoing the final uh, rec um, re review. Um, so the 3.1 is mainly is going to be enable the AI memory sharing and the memory pooling, uh, go through the global attached fabric memory, uh, which is, can be, um, for example, you can see that this. Uh, so, so the, um, and so those. Uh, GPUs can connect in with our chip, and also GFAMs uh, can connect with our chip as well. So those, uh, um, the, the GFAM basically is very large, those uh, um, global memory, which is, can be shared by the host and the GPUs. So since the GPU needs a lot of memory, the HBM, they only have a limited uh, capacity to host uh, um, the, the large, memory model, so basically a lot of the, um, the data storage is going to be geared to the G GFAM. And the 3.1, they define those uh, cache coherency protocol called the backing validate. So uh, basically the, 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 the GPU and the GFAM can using this new CXO protocol to keep um, all this sharing to be consistent. So um, for 3.1, they can build a tree structure like uh, microchip folks uh, mentioned that. And the most, most exciting thing is they can build a much more like, large, um, the mesh, this kind of fabric. So um, that will op open the door for, for people to build a very large the AI system. So um, our next generation of the chip is going to be fully support these functionalities. So this is our product and also our customers basically is uh, um, ordering this product to enable their developing their software system because in, in this ecosystem software is a key. Um, you know, some people said hardware is hard. I think software is pretty hard too. 
So um, that's why our uh, ecosystem partners the uh, uh, purchase our SDK to build the memory porting systems based on what the market has, which is uh, CXO 1.1 servers, and they are able to start developing that software. Um, so we provide the, uh, the real-time riser card and also the, the base uh, baseboard um, is with our switch chip inside, and also we have those uh, connection expander as well. So we are working with the industry leader for the, all the CXL modules to get this ecosystem to be able to uh, build up. <clears throat> so um, how do we accelerate the CXL adoption? Obviously, the XCon is a pioneer in this uh, industry. We started working with uh, the leading the leading the CSP providers and also memory vendors about almost two years ago. And we collect all of their, their inputs to um, that really help us to shape our first revision of the CXL switches. Um, and uh, we are also working with um, the memory vendors, with retimer vendors, software vendors to get this uh, ecosystem to be able to move ahead and some of our pioneer um, customers has already started demo on this uh, that's almost like a production ready system to their own customers as well. So this is our product line. So today we are we are uh, custom sampling our uh, first silicon in a, in a, in about uh, six months ago. Um, so our production version with a 2.0 is going to be on the market uh, in the middle of the next year. So that's going to be the one of the cornerstone flagship chip to, to enable um, our current customers to start production into their CXO memory pooling system. And our next generation is going to be PCIe 3.1 with a PCIe Gen 6 6.1. Uh, so we're expecting to receive our sample in the Q1 uh, 20, 2025. Uh, we are working with our um, the, the CPU and GPU partners on this uh, Apollo 2 as well. Um, please, um, uh, you're welcome to visit our website and uh, to, um, to order our products. Thank you. Any question? Uh, hi, uh, I have a quick question. Sure. So you you showed about in your switch about the scaling, like how it can scale to uh, for pooling devices, right? But um, in March 2023. Microsoft, Google, and uh, CMU, they came up with a paper saying that multi-headed devices might be a better option when you are sharing and pooling uh, memory for the manageability in a data center. How would you respond to that? Sure, that's a good question. So um, uh, basically, the ultimate solution for the industry is to using the CXO switch, because CXO switch is much easier to cascading. So even for our 2.0 switch, we, we, we do have the proprietary mode to enable the cascading between several of our switches so that our customer can connect much more number of the hosts and also a um, large volume of the CXL modules to build a very large system. For the multi-head, we would feel like this is like, like intermediate solution um, because you cannot scale, you cannot uh, share well with a large number of the hosts. And uh, it's also very hard to build a very large uh, memory system uh, as well, like a few hundred terabytes or even bigger than that. But 
they want to have smaller sure they want to have a sure. smaller set of hosts who uh -huh. which are sharing uh, some devices so that they can have kind of islands of things the, they don't want to have 4k nodes uh, you know sharing one piece of uh, memory that's that was the point i how i took that paper sure um you think about all these applications, right? These cloud application, there's open AI, there's chat, GPT, or the, 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 the LLM, right? So those guys are, are, are sucking so much memories. So those guys are the one drive this uh, um, demand to have to build much larger memory systems. I agree with you, if you're running like small applications, in a small scale, that, that multi-head, that's, that's a good, sufficient, easy to manage. But the challenge is, and also the industry is working towards, is to, to solve this manageability so that the, the ultimate goal is for the, for the data center to be able to build very large AI servers. Yeah. Sure, you're welcome. Go ahead. So just a quick one. Uh, in, uh, in Samak's talk this morning, he showed tree structure topology in which it was almost like, you know, when you are in this pool device configuration, you can just come in and replace a switch with a multi-headed, uh, sorry, replace a multi-headed pool node with just a switch and expand your topology. Is your switch compatible with the idea that Samak showed? Uh Basically, our space switch is pretty simple. We are the CXL slash PCIe switch. So for the multi-headed, obviously, you can connect with our switch as well, since multi-head also has a CXL interface, right? I'm just clarifying. It's an investment protection question. Uh -huh. So if somebody builds pool direct wired uh, thing right now, right. and then they just take out that pool and replace it with a switch from yes. your company, that, it will work, right? For that will work right away, yes. Okay, thanks. Right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quick question about the uh, latency. So <coughs> we cascade multiple switch, and yeah, so that's, you have a lot of memory kind of for the open AI kind of. Like right, that. right. But however, for those like a uh, model, you also for if, if it's uh, for inference, then the latency is very sensitive. Then in that case, if you cascade multiple switch, how do you handle that limitation? Right, yeah, that's a good question as well. So typically in the CXO world, if because memory latency is very sensitive, you don't want to cascade that much. So that's why we build this chip with much higher capacity, so that if you don't need to cascade, just don't do it. Right. Like if you use Broadcom chip, you probably have to use two chip heads to cascading with each other, right? So then you will add in the latency. So that's a good advantage of ours, yeah. Okay, okay thanks, Jerry. All right. Thank you. <laughs>